Hey mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I am at my local park and I've collected a grip of green spored parasol mushrooms to show you. The scientific name for these is Chlorophyllum molybdites and they are very common in rings and arcs and grass. I came to the park hoping to find one to show you, uh, you know, one of these giant rings and uh, unfortunately it got mowed. So uh, you will find these predominantly in grass and these are uh, toxic mushrooms. They won't kill you. They're part of uh, what is colloquially called the lose your lunch bunch. So it's a few mushrooms that will make you feel very ill, typically uh, pray to the porcelain god, perhaps overnight, and then recover swiftly. This mushroom is so abundant and also bears some resemblance to popular uh, edible parasol mushrooms, uh, such that it is the species that causes more poisonings in North America than any other mushroom species. So even though, you know, that's uh, cautionary, it's also kind of reassuring that people aren't running around uh, poisoning themselves with uh, more toxic species and say the Amanita genus or something. All right, so let's talk about how to identify this mushroom. As I said, it grows in uh, grass primarily. It is a decomposer, so it's sort of growing in these large mycelial mats uh, and it fruits sort of at the perimeter of that mat, which I think is kind of cool. Like when I see a giant arc or ring, it gives me a sense of the sheer magnitude of these mycelium mats and that, you know, these mushrooms as big and glorious as they are, are simply fruiting bodies and a mechanism for spreading. In this case, a lot of uh, green spores. And so this is a specimen that actually shows the spore color because it was living underneath one of the biggins. So uh, because they grow in uh, sort of colonies or clusters, you oftentimes have them sort of overlapping. And so you have a really good view of that uh, spore color. It's sort of a green gray, like low quality burger pickle kind of color. Uh, and also you can see that color come in on the gills as the mushroom matures. So like by the time it is fully mature and sporulating, it's really prominent that it has uh, this green uh, gill and spore situation. But the problem for folks is uh, mushrooms that are a little bit younger and do not ha yet have green spores. So here is a baby. They come up in little adorable clubs that look uh, sometimes like shaggy manes, which is another edible species. But anyway, they're much, you know, larger and chunkier. But, uh, you know, sometimes you can open them up and be like, oh, there are white gills here. And that means that it's probably safe. One, you know, a parasol mushroom that is safe or a shaggy mane that is safe. And uh, that is not the case. So the best way to keep yourself from losing your lunch is to make sure that you're looking at multiple specimens. Given this mushroom's habit uh, with growing in these big rings, that's usually not all that difficult. And so identification is very, I think, straightforward and simple if you know what you're looking at. But again, problematically, uh, there are some really wonderful uh, well, it's not problematic that there are wonderful edible parasol mushrooms, but uh, the uh, similarity between this and those mushrooms can cause uh, problems. And also people who just are like, those look like cool edible wild mushrooms and they try them out or, you know, a child gets into them and they have to call poison control. Like there's a lot of situations under which people accidentally or intentionally and then regret consuming this mushroom. But uh, I'm showing you here the sort of the behavior that happens sort of toward the end of when it is uh, pale gilled, but uh, it really is something that you just have to look at an older specimen if you're not super familiar. But as with many mushrooms, once you see it a few times, you will just sort of indelibly have it imprinted on your brain. And it's really nice because mushroom scientific names change a lot. There's also a lot of new knowledge to absorb very frequently. But once you know how to recognize an organism when people elaborate on it, you're like, oh, this is my old friend, Chlorophyllum molybdites, and now I understand a little bit more about it as new things uh, emerge. So don't find mushroom identification to be daunting. I guess that's what I'm saying. I'm going to do the, um, let's see, cicada season sweat dab. Here we go. 
All right, so let's talk about other features of this mushroom. This one is a really attractive one because it highlights this felty double uh, ringed or a uh, double layered ring on the stem. And it's really sort of durable. And actually, if you like sort of pop it loose, it will move in one piece up and down the stem. Most of the time when you have a mushroom with a ring on the stem, it is either ephemeral or you can fairly easily remove it but they don't have this sort of uh, nice double layer with this like brownish ridge in the middle and a little floofiness on the top and the bottom. And again, felty uh, and pretty robust and resilient. All right, let's look at one that shows the, um, the features of the cap a little bit better uh, because these are sun baked. That's another thing. This mushroom goes from like uh, fresh as a daisy to either mowed or brown and uh, leathery by the end of the day. But here we go. So the top of the cap has uh, scales on it and these are sort of brown um, and often when they're more fresh, it's a much darker brown. These are, as I said, uh, sun bleached pretty substantially. But, you know, when they are um, not so, they almost look like a dark brown colored pencil peel or shavings on, on top. And so uh, that is something that a lot of other parasol mushrooms share are the scales on the top. And so that is just something that kind of gets you into the right area. Uh, there's also sort of a nipple on the top of each of these. I do want to uh, qualify and clarify. There are a lot of other mushrooms that have, uh, you know, scaliness or an umbo. That is the name of this little nipple feature. Uh, so it's kind of a like taken all together primarily with this really conspicuous like gray green egregious uh spore color it is um amazing and also because it is so fast to mature you know this was uh very very creamy colored even when i collected it a couple of hours ago so um as far as toxicity is concerned there are some people that will boil and eat this mushroom. I am not interested in doing that. I've talked to enough people who have said, nah, I accidentally in, you know, ingested this mushroom, or I have spoken to people who have, or people who, uh, you know, moderate forums for toxic mushroom events. Most of them are like, nah, just to, to steer clear of that. And that's kind of where I'm at. Um, However, there are people that, you know, boil and consume it and is apparently safe. And again, like, if you do get sick from this mushroom, it is going to be a short-lived, although very unpleasant experience. Uh, the name of the toxin, let's see if I can dredge it out. It is, since it is chlorophyllum molybdides, it is molybdophilicin is the name of the toxin in it. And it is a, um, an enzyme, and so it's not like uh, amatoxins, which are the uh, really toxic uh, poisons that are in amanita mushrooms like the death cap, the destroying angel, and also our deadly gallerina little brown mushroom. So like, if you wanna learn about deadly toxic mushrooms, sidebar, I have a lot of videos about that, and there are a lot of great resources out there. But um, the toxin that is in this is different from amatoxin and different from those really dangerous, uh, you know, dangerous poisons. It is uh, an enzyme and it just does not agree with the human gut. And so once you expel it, you will recover quickly. Uh, but I just, obviously this is a mushroom that I'm showing you because I don't want you to do that unless you are highly informed or power boiling it and consider yourself to be an adventurous type. Uh, and so, you know, all power to you if that is your, your bag. But for me, I just love the size and stateliness of this mushroom, especially this ring, uh, because often the rings are so easy to destroy and they don't have this nice sort of symmetrical double ring to them. So uh, it checks a couple of my boxes and tickles some of my neurons. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you find a billion mushrooms edible and otherwise, and we'll talk again soon.